All right, let's get right into it. Today's trade review video, what happened today in these markets. We got a little bit of a sell-off, and that's good. We need some selling in this market, all right? It's not a bad thing. It's healthy for the markets. And uh, let's, let's just go over real quick. Oops, let's just go over real quick what went down today. Oh, my video skills are all over the place today. Here we go. What's going on today? So, overnight let's talk about what happened overnight so if in this green these green uh this is the green profile i like to call it the green profile just kidding this is the overnight profile um it's just a different color than my regular day trading hours so i could differentiate them i used to have you know them on a separate uh chart but it's very easier on the eyes um and a lot easier than switching over to just have them on the same freaking chart. All right, so that's that. Um, if we look at last week, we had that end of the day rally up into 28.69. And let's see what happened to that level coming into Globex last night. Well, coming into Globex last night, um, we quickly dropped, right? We gapped down, I took a short there, covered 10 points down lower. Last night, that was the first trade of the week. Started off hot. Um, but yeah, we gapped down. Um, and then it came back up to retest that uh, 28.69, Friday's close price. And what did it do? Pretty much nothing. Wasn't able to go and accept above that level. Um, we kind of peeped above it a couple times. If you look at this overnight profile, you'll see. We peeped above it a couple times and then just came right back down below. So that is a rejection. That is not acceptance above the level. Looked like it was for a little bit, but what happened? Came right back down below. That signifies a rejection, all right, and not acceptance. It's more of acceptance um, lower, below the level, right? So, because where did it spend more time? Below the level. So, that was more of like a stop run of those shorts from late in Friday session. Um, and yeah, this thing really, uh, sold off last night and we had a nice little, nice little gap down sell off kind of thing coming into the open. What I was looking for, here comes Globex opening right about now. Um, coming into the open, since we had such a large gap down or a large move lower and there wasn't really any panic selling down there below that 2820s, um, and below yes or friday's low since there was no real panic sell in there um this thing didn't really continue lower today so what i my first trade of the day was a long um when we get the overnight inventory either 100 percent short or 100 percent long i go against that move right at the open so right at the open i didn't really catch it um i didn't catch it right at the open 9 30 but the move accepted back into value. So coming into the open, right, we had price below value and below value meaning Friday's uh, value, right? So we had a value area low, 28.23.75 and Friday's value area high, 28.45, okay? 50, 28.45.50. So that was, those were the key levels I was watching for today. And price coming into the open, we peeped below Friday's value, right? Looked like we were going to break out lower. Didn't happen. Came, came into the open, um, accepted right back into value, all right? So this is today's profile here. Um, came right back into value, and there was a good opportunity to get long for inventory correction. So inventory correction being we had overnight all the way short, right? You could clearly see even on a candlestick chart, it just went down overnight. Coming into the open, you can expect, you know, a nice 10, sometimes 20 point move right at the open. And we got that. I missed it, but I got in later when the move was actually accepting into value. It was actually accepting into value. The overnight correction B period came back down to retest um, the value area low. Wasn't even able to touch value area low. So it accepted above back into value now my target is the other side of value, value area high, 28.45. Remember that level I just talked about? So that was the target. That trade was a nice one. <laughs> um, but that was kind of the, 
the least likely scenario I had in the back of my mind. I thought we were just going to correct the overnight inventory and then shoot back down lower. That didn't happen. So I don't really like to predict what happens because there you go. I would have been biased all day and gotten screwed until later in the day. I probably would have made all the money back. But today I had a 100% win rate on all my trades. So I don't really predict. I just react to what's going on with the profile and a bunch of other things that line up. Um, but most importantly, the profile, what it's telling me, it, where's price accepting, where are we relative to value? And that's what keeps me alive day to day. And that's what helps me get these little few point trades here and there. Um, so that was the first one. B period came down and retested the value area low, hung above, made higher lows, didn't even retest the opening print. So I was like, all right, this correction can you know, turn to something bigger here. Um, there wasn't any real selling going on. Like I said, there wasn't any panic sellers coming in. So it rotated back up to the value area high. And then we actually stuck above that value area high for a little bit. It was starting to look like we were going to get a trend day later in the day. Um, but it really didn't do much over the value area high. Uh, besides, you know, fill in the single prints. Didn't even fill in all of them from that late in the day spike on Friday. Remember when it spiked up all on Friday? It left some single prints and E period came up to retest it. Didn't really get, um, it left a couple single prints there, which is fine. We'll fill those in on the way back up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where the market stopped. Um, e period. And then uh, the next trade, I was just taking trades all day not all day, kind of in the morning. Then I stopped, came back later in the day. And the last trade of the day was a short from uh, from like around here in J period, right? So we had a little technical or mechanical low H and I period at 28.38, right? Later in the day around, uh, oof, what time is that? 1.30ish. So around 1.30ish, um, we had this poor low put in midday, right? We had this poor low H and I period, and then J period opened up, spiked up a bit, whipped out the stops from the I period high, those shorts, right? And that's where I was getting short. That's where I was getting short, um, just to take out that, that poor low, 38, right? So that was like the last trade of the day that I took. Um, and yeah, that was just a mechanical reference point. This market is super mechanical right now. And I'm just using the profile to my advantage, taking taking these trades. Um, and yeah, just going for a few points here and there. Not really using the biggest size and it just still adds up nicely. So yeah, those were the trades I took. The thing ended up going lower, um, I said, once we take out this I H and I period low, that mechanical low that I saw, I covered right there, like right below 38.25 was my cover. And that was it. Um, took a nice trade off of like 40 something. And uh, yeah, I said, if we break below H and I period, this mechanical low, if we continue down here, then we're going to go back and retest that 28.23. That sure happened. We got a little bounce off of that level. Looked like we were gonna get a similar move to Friday, right? K period Friday put in the low, um, right at the you know the low that everybody was looking like it was gonna break through, right? Um, so it was kind of setting up like the similar trade from Friday that I took, a bounce all the way back up to take out all these seller stops. But I was like, you know what? I don't think this is gonna happen again, two days back to back they're gonna do that I don't think so um, but it looked like it was gonna happen there and then next period opened up or K period even blew through the opening print so that was another uh, indicator that I don't think this is gonna bounce here end of the day but yeah sure enough the thing actually did get some selling today um, and broke through that previous 2821 which is from some time ago, I don't know um, why that's on here actually, but whatever. Today we will look for 
the main important thing was that we broke below value today. So we broke below value and it seems like we accepted below value into the close. You could say we broke above value today too, but that didn't last too long. We'll see if this lasts overnight. Um, coming into the overnight session, if I am, if I'm guessing right here, which I don't really like to guess, we do have these stops that might want to be run before this market goes lower. So M period, we got stops at 50, uh, 28, 2850. And then we got more here, K period. And then we got more up here, J period. I don't know if we'll get that high. <coughs> Excuse me, Corona. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that high. K period, J period, but those are some stops we could look at for this overnight session. Or if the market wants to keep going lower, let's take a look at today's close price. Today's settlement 2806, which we just retested here at the Globex Open. I'll look for acceptance below there. We still got this gap from uh, Thursday 27.97. That's a reference point lower. If we start accepting below today's close, 2806, we could probably see this at uh, 2797 tonight. All right, so that's a reference point lower, 2797, that gap fill. Um, and then below there, we got that day's close, which was Thursday. You look at Thursday's close price, it's 2787. And that should put us into value there from Thursday. And you know what that means. We rotate to the value area low, 27.66. So let's see if we get some selling. Some selling will not be the worst thing here for this market since it's just been rallying up for no reason. Um, and yeah, no reason at all. Uh, but another thing to point out was crude oil today. Crude oil, wasn't that a fucking crazy move? Um, if we pull up CLK, which was the front month contract, we will see that this thing went negative. Negative. has I don't think it's ever happened. Crude oil has never went negative before. But today was the day. 2020 is the year. Shit that's not supposed to happen is going to happen. I've been saying this time and time again. And today was one of those days where crude oil... I mean, shit that's not supposed to happen, happened. Like, why the frick did this thing go? Look at this. I can't even pull up a profile for you guys because <laughs> it went to negative 40. Negative 40 is our support for this overnight session here. Um, I think this expires tomorrow. CLK20. Holy moly. One of my buddies said he was short. Ex floor trader guy. He was short from 26 and covered at zero. <laughs> Imagine that. That's $26,000 per contract. And I know damn well he was not trading one contract. Um, but what the? I don't even know what to tell you about this. They're pretty much paying you to go uh, take delivery on these crude oil barrels. So if you got a big backyard that doesn't need to be used, I'd use it for some fucking crude oil because this is the time, this is the opportunity of a lifetime right now. Like, I'm not going to go and buy crude oil futures. What I'm going to do is go and buy, like, I don't even know if I want to show you this chart right now. Jesus, it's just chilling at negative 15. And there's definitely no levels I could give you below here. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but what I will do is how I'm going to play this since crude oil is down so heavy and if you've been watching my previous videos this is way below the buy target that i was uh looking for i was looking to buy around 17 bucks now it's negative past negative 17 bucks so what i'm gonna do uh to be safe here is buy into uh usl all right usl or dbo this is another good one but more, more uh, importantly, or more, more attractively, I don't know what I'm trying to say. What I'm putting more money into is USL. That's for sure. All right. So if you don't want to buy the crude oil longer term futures contracts that expire like a few months down the road, um, you put your money into something like this because they track 
uh, the longer term, you know, 12 month um, crude oil contracts rather than USO, which, you know, tracks the contracts that roll over month to month. So this is a long term bet here on uh, crude oil on USL. I'll be buying a few thousand shares of this. Uh, this is not financial advice. That's going to be my disclaimer there. But that's what I'm going to do with my money. Um, USL. Yeah, USL. This is how I'm going to be playing it. And uh, yeah, crude oil. Wow, I don't even, I'm speechless. Like this thing went negative, negative, negative $40. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> this is wild. Anyone, any commodity trader will tell you that this is wild. And it's definitely not normal. You probably know already it ain't normal. But yeah, crude oil. Um, here's the normal contract. Or here's the, the contract that uh, we'll be trading after tomorrow. Um, CLEM20 is what it's going to be. Um, but even this one is looking very bearish. Like, I really want to short this thing. I really do. Um, and I also want, and I also am going to buy that uh, USL tomorrow. All right? I already bought some, but I'll buy more. But yeah, that's crude oil, wildness, bunch of wild shit happening in these, in these markets. What a time to be trading them. But yeah, that's some levels I got for ES. And uh, that's my plan for crude oil. I don't really have any levels for you down here. Uh, but below 2030, today's close price, we should see this back into the teens for this -E CLM contract. Um, and yeah, that's that. Looks like it's taking a hit here again overnight. Uh, but yeah, below that's 20, what did I say? 2030, today's close, today's pit session close. Probably makes its way back into the teens pretty easily. Um, there's still no demand for crude oil as it's dropping. As it, uh, still no demand for crude oil as the economy is still shut down. There is more demand for this kind of shit right now. Germex, um, whatever you call this, hand sanitizer. There's more demand for that and toilet paper than there is for crude oil. And it's wild. But this is the time of the life. This is the opportunity of a lifetime if you want to make a lot of money on this crude oil thing <laughs> when it goes back up. We don't know when, but doesn't matter when this is a long-term bet for me like within the next year i'd say this is going to pay off um but that's my plan you don't got to follow it don't worry and yeah that's my plan for tonight if we get below 2806.50 on the es we should come back to test that gap uh 27.97 if not if we want to play around tonight if the ghouls the prop money is doing their thing tonight we should uh run these stops these end of the day stops for these uh these shorts people that are selling into the close 28 28 50 28 33 and then up here 28 49 if it could get that high we'll see i'll keep you posted in the chat room if you're not in the chat room click the link down below this video get in there we're trading this market every day i'm on the live stream every morning calling out the trades that i'm taking um even when i'm not trading i'm you know helping people out in there whatever market you're trading we trade them all in here uh stocks forex i got the forex room um the vip room put the link down below for that um and yeah that's it we're trading everything, really. I'm mostly trading futures and uh, forex, and there's some some options trades here and there, some stock trades here and there, but actively every single day, you'll see me on the live stream. 
If you're not in the group chat, click that link down below. Hope you enjoyed this trade review video. It's about 20 minutes long now. Holy shit. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you had a green day. And uh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow or tonight if you're in the chat room. <laughs> Peace.